you, Esau, you, you said, let me go back to you. Um, in your Ephesians, you wrote the commentary to Ephesians in this perfect. volume. Yeah. It was very good. I read it one afternoon. And, and as I said in the review video, these function to me at least like a, like a, a, um, a companion. Like, read yeah. this as a companion to a, as you're reading yeah. scripture, which is what a yeah, good commentary that's, that's should that's be. Yeah. But um, it, you said, I love this quote. Within the what North American saying? church, there exist streams and communities that not only ignore racism and sexism, but suggest that those individuals who promote justice in these arenas are being needlessly divisive. Yeah. But we who believe that racism and sexism are sins that are doing real damage to the church are not causing division. We're taking the fall seriously. And that's page 421. And then you said a couple of paragraphs down issues of divisiveness in one community are matters of life and death in the other community. Yeah. And I, I think that's a powerful quote on its own. But the question that I wanted to ask you in thinking that is, so take in your mind, picture the most, uh, any Christian who would say, okay, that, this is being a little divisive. Yeah. Take the best version of that Christian, like the most yeah. thoughtful yeah, version. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is, is something valid that they are concerned about? And then how do you address that? How do you build that bridge and well, say, this is how we have to come together on this? Well, the idea is that I think what they are worried is that these things are going to ultimately divide us mm. and that their concern is for Christian unity. That they mm. want the entire body of Christ to be together and to be on mission. Mm. And so that concern or that desire is real. But I think that what I would say is it sometimes assume it, it asks the person who is suffering to do a disproportionate amount of work. So in other words, I have to ignore the things that are that are actually harming me for the sake of unity. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens, that that unaddressed wound can lead to bitterness that ultimately becomes more divisive in the long term. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like if you're in any kind of relationship, if you have a friendship with me and you had a, a disagreement and me and you never addressed it and we kind of just decided to go forward in the friendship, it's always sitting there, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't say, no, you know, that time when you didn't agree that LeBron was the GOAT and you laughed at me, <laughs> that like really hurt my heart. And we need to, like, we, and so I think, I think it is important to say that in any relationship, it can only be as unified as it is honest. Mm. Um, and so I think, and so that's like one thing that I would say. The other thing that I would say is I think that people often, and this happens to me all of the time, they go on the internet or they read books and they read all the things about race or sexism that they don't, sorry, right. race or that they don't like, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they come to me and say, are you meaning this, this, and this? And yeah. I was like, no, I didn't say any of those things. Like, no, but I read this on the book, I read this on the blog. I was like, well, I'm not responsible for everything that you heard about race that you didn't like. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for what I said. And so I think that sometimes people hear the most extreme versions of things and then attribute that extreme version to everyone who's talking about it. Yeah. And they think that to acknowledge, for example, they think that to acknowledge structural racism in America means that we claim that every single thing in America is racist and everybody's racist. Yep. Because they read that somewhere, they heard mm -hmm. that somewhere. But I don't say that every single person in America is racist. America is racist in every single way possible. I'm saying that race still impacts structures in society in ways that are not like deniable. So, I mean, and I hate to like use analogies, but for example, like they've done a million studies. They've done a million studies. You can find any of them on something as simple as like CVs. Mm -hmm. And they give the identical CV of someone. And if one CV has his name, John Smith, and the other one name is Shanika Johnson, Shanika Johnson doesn't get as many emails back. Mm -hmm. Same CV, same. And so there is, as we see, like racial biases in hiring. And people yeah. don't want to hear that because it yeah. feels divisive. But if I'm the person not getting a call back, then this is impacting me. And so the idea that simply not talking about things makes it go away mm -hmm. to me is not true in our personal lives. So therefore, it shouldn't be expected to be true in churches. Imagine this. I think maybe I'll put it this way. There are tons of things that if we never mentioned them, church would be easier. 
Yeah. Like people don't like when you talk about greed. And we say, you know, you should be more generous. Well, talking about me giving up my stuff is divisive. I feel like we should be unified and focus on Jesus. Well, no, your greed is getting in the way of your discipleship. Yeah. And so it can actually be a manifestation of love to tell people the truth, even when it's hard. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if I could, uh, that is yeah. superb. Uh, just one other angle that I wonder might be going on is a sense of, well, if I have these conversations from the majority culture perspective, then I will be shamed and I need to deny myself. And But the work of the Holy Spirit, and prayerfully, we hope this is true. Our authors hope this is true. God's work is never to obliterate the person, but to convict of sin. So are you going to read some passages? And I hope all of us feel some conviction of, you know what? I've had some privilege or I have been ignorant of the sufferings of others. Mm. And I need to work on that. But God's way is to convict and then to give us the hope for change and repentance and redemption. So if someone is fearful of like, I'm going to be shamed and need to obliterate myself. Well, that is not how scripture works. And that is not right. how we as authors and editors hope that this, would, but are you going to read and be uncomfortable? Yeah. But I hope that happens to you most times that you read your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> like if you read every day and you're like, I am just happy unity. Everything is good. Then I don't know. Maybe you're just way more sanctified than I am. But. <laughs> or in a lot of denial. <laughs> That's probably.